like a violin and cut your All tree. right, so let's kick off the Batman, right? I want to talk about the Batman first. Um, because the Batman is definitely a big deal. He is, uh, Warner Brothers is gonna got a lot of a success with that. So they're gonna, you know, we'll see. Um, here's what I hope. I hope that this is like a chapter one type situation. Um, okay. So first off, tons of spoiler warnings, spoiler warnings, spoiler warnings. Um, maybe I can make that go across there. So you guys will kind of be warned because I'm not about to talk about this kind of stuff and not and just hold back and make two videos, three videos. I, I, I don't know. If you don't want to see it or you want to know, you should be watching videos. Like, I don't know what to tell you. So spoiler warning is out there. Um, scroll across the bottom. Yeah, that's what I want. So go ahead. There you go. There you go. There we go. Show. Yeah, there we go. Spoiler warning. Talk about the Batman. Okay. So. The Batman is directed by Matt Reeves, stars Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne slash Batman, Zoe Kravitz as the Selena Kyle. She is not Catwoman in this movie yet. She's There's some allusions to her, but that's not who she is. Um, Paul Dano as, quote, the Riddler. Um, Colin Farrell as a penguin, or Oz, as they call him, or Az in this? Oz, Oz. And then... Um, there's, there's other, you know, Carmen Falcone and some others. Anyway, so here's the thing. This is, uh, has, um, year two Batman, or at least let's call it inexperienced Batman. This movie is significantly more and differently grounded than the, um, Christopher Nolan films, which are kind of widely considered to be the best films of the Batman films. Dark Knight being, you know, the quintessential classic Batman Begins and Dark Knight Rises. And I will say they did a great job of presenting a different kind of Gotham. I definitely like Gotham City more than this than any other Batman film. I, I really have some soft spots for the uh, Tim Burton uh, first film, not the second one. And I could talk about it. I rewatched all of the Batman movies. Well, all of the live action Batman movies except for Batman and Robin. I'm not saying through that again um so it really sets up a, an inexperienced batman in a dark it's raining a lot corrupt um cities like a like a, you know a lot of new york elements but not in new york right so even the daytime it still looks you know very you know i won't say steampunk but that's sort of like you know, it's it's always it's dark, a lot of neon signs and kind of like a punk element to it at times. Just this is a lot of these. I just I just liked a lot of that. Uh, Bruce is having to ride a motorcycle into town, change into his Batman costume, and he's taking down low level criminals. The bat signal is like a symbol of fear for the criminals. Like there's hesitation of like, well, should I go into that dark alley after committing this this crime? Because the Batman could be there, right? And then against all of that is the Riddler, who is basically a Zodiac killer with a Riddler name. He's got puzzles and um, little messages for the Batman. And he's setting up this mission to uh, out the uh, corrupt elements and uh, take care of the corrupt elements of Gotham City. Oz is the penguin. They don't really call him Oswald Cobblepot much. A couple of comments back and forth on him. He's sort of like an underboss, Carmine Falcone, because uh, Totoro is, is is played him. And um, okay, I do not want to have any of this happen. So how do I? Yeah, I just snooze that. Oh my gosh, we shut everything off. That would be terrible. Some sort of crazy Windows update just popped on my computer. Um, so. Penguin is like an underboss. He's not really the gangster yet. He runs a little little club, um, and that kind of has a storyline that uh, kind of works itself through um, uh, as well. And then, of course, Zoe Kravitz is basically just like, you know, she's working at the Penguin's Iceberg Lounge. She's worried about her friend that puts her in a cross path with Batman. She's kind of like a thief. She's kind of like a low-level criminal, but she, you know, has these aspirations to help her friend in, the, in this little little story that they got going on so let me break it down first thing is the first 
50, 60, 70% of the movie is really pretty good. Actually, especially the first half or so. Really, really good. Um, I will say that I am shocked. Robert Pattinson is good looking in the Batman suit. Uh, Robert Pattinson is never Bruce Wayne. He is, if anything, uh, hey, Lisa, I see you watching on Facebook. Thanks for joining me. Talking about the Batman. Uh, Robert Pattinson is never Bruce Wayne. He is emo Bruce Wayne. He's basically Batman without the mask and stuff on. He is a disconnected, uh, depressed human struggling with what the Batman's role should be and why things are not getting better, even though he's been doing this for a while. And all of none of that really worked, except under the premise that he can evolve. Like, so this is like year two Batman, right? So I know people don't want a time jump. They don't want these things. And we can talk, we'll talk about the ending briefly, but I would rather see the next film be like three years later. Like he's really evolved. He's become the, you know, billionaire playboy entrepreneur and those kinds of things. Um, I, I, I don't want, this is not Bruce Wayne. This was, that part was terrible. Um, him meeting Selena Kyle, who's not really, she's like prototype Catwoman again, can work. Um, because she can evolve. The Riddler doesn't work at all. Like, he's Riddler only in name. He's not reminiscent of comic books. He's not reminiscent of uh, TV show, movies, anything. He's he's Z Zodiac killer, serial killer. Could have been called something else, but obviously they're going with the name recognition. Um, Batman does a great job. It's like detective work. It's it, The editing is, is kind of terrible at times because it takes everything is drawn out way too long. Like, the walking around, the standing around. All that just takes way too long. At least 20 minutes could have come off this film's run. Like it was close to three hours. At least 20 to 30 minutes could have come out of all this. And that, we're not even talking about the ending part. Just 10, 15 minutes of just this this slow, methodical nonsense. There's no, it, does, it adds no real value to that. I, I, didn't, I didn't think. So Batman actually ends up working with Gordon. And Gordon kind of protects him from getting arrested. But the, he'll walk into the room where the police are. And the police are like, what's with the freak being here? And, you know. Gordon's keeping them from dealing with it with him and arresting him, but it's just, I don't know. I didn't like it after a while. Like one scene I thought maybe would have worked, but they, the, the, the best approach was what we saw with Dark Knight where Gordon's like everybody out, you know, give me the room, those kinds of things, or where they make the lights go out and then suddenly he appears with the whole ninja thing. I didn't like any of this whole cop versus Batman stuff. I thought after a while, I mean, I know there's some of this in the comic book and they are trying to go for a little bit of that, but I didn't think any of that worked real well. So the story goes on with the Riddler executing all these corrupt, uh, high profile characters, you know, the guy running for mayor, the district attorney, you know, all these different, these folks. And then there's this, this effort to even kill Bruce Wayne because he's outing the family, the Thomas Wayne. Cause this is the major, this is the only major change that I had mixed feelings on. Um, they changed sort of like Bruce's backstory, like Martha was ill and had to be institutionalized and there was a cover-up and there was a, guy, a person that uh, was trying to out all of these different things and the connections to Arkham. So Thomas Wayne went to Falcone, the mobster, and the, the mobster did what the mobsters do. They just killed the guy and that's not what Thomas Wayne wanted. So Bruce is finding all this out because of the Riddler and Riddler thinks it's going to like draw them together and be a closer connection. And I didn't find that at all. I think it just, it was like trying to also make it like, is it, is it, a different side of the same coin that they're supposed to be alike. Um, and it, I gotta be honest, the Riddler, other than being called Riddler and the weird costuming that they chose, um, it, none of that's really that bad. There's a couple scenes that are terrible. Like Batman's trying to solve the riddle with the guy, the bomb strapped to him, but just messes up and the bomb goes off, but like goes off in his face, which was terrible. Batman's a human, so we shouldn't have bombs going off in his face. His cape or something should have gone up, protected him. He's knocked unconscious. Police get him. Don't, they don't take off the mask. He's in the police scene. You saw that in one of the trailers where he punches Gordon and I don't know. So it's dumb because later on the police don't care that he's around again. It, it you know. The movie has a ton of those kind of contradictions in the third act. Like once you get to the third act, there's stuff that's happening that contradicts the whole first half of the movie. So the movie is stuck at like a six for me, maybe a six and a half to seven. If I really put a lot of emphasis on the first half, but the last half of this movie, it becomes a mess because 
Bruce is in conflict with his family, goes to Alfred about all of this, doesn't ask how Alfred is, because Alfred is the one that got blown up because they were trying to kill Bruce Wayne. And Alfred's fine, um, but there's no, like, you know, how you doing? It's like he walks in the room, he's like, you lied to me. And it's like, okay, okay, we're getting, this is way too dramatic. And then it becomes a story. Riddler just turns himself in. He just goes to the diner. And that was just totally dumb because now the scheme was he has these trucks set around Gotham. He's going to blow them up and flood the city. What his entire motivation, the entire movie was like corruption and these evil, powerful figures that are all uh, representative of the corrupt system. And suddenly he puts everyone in harm's way. Like it was just, it didn't make sense that he's making that decision on his own. There's not another big baddie. And the name drop in the film was basically Hush's real name, this reporter from Thomas Wayne. So I don't understand why Hush is not the main villain, even if he doesn't do anything in that last scene. Even if he, you just see him there with his face covered and Batman can't get to him and he escapes and he's really the one pulling Riddler's scene uh, strings. It would have just made more sense for there to be another big bad or something else that would have driven Riddler because that last part doesn't make any sense. So Falcone is really the one who killed his parents um, because of Thomas Wayne wanting to out him for murdering the reporter and all of that. So there's this, this twist on the origin story, which isn't horrible. Um, I didn't hate it, um, but I didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. So, yeah, sorry. I see some spam popping up on the YouTube side. If you guys are seeing that, I'm trying to get it to go away. Uh, okay, so the Penguin has the best... I mean, whoever did his makeup and stuff did a great job. And all the music and stuff in that first half and all that. You've seen the penguin chase scene with the car, the Batmobile. And again, the suit and the car are like prototypes, right? So on his suit, when he's, when, let me, you know, so let me, let me change, get rid of this. Let me get rid of this. So, so when you see the suit, you see a lot of the weapons and the, the gadgets that he has. Like you can see all of this stuff. It's not all hidden away yet. It's like a prototype suit. And then um, with the car, there's really not a lot of gadgets on the car, right? So the gadgets are um, kind of hidden or are not there. There's like, basically, it's like a really fancy, cool car with like a jet engine strapped to the back. And it's pretty cool, but it's really not the end all be all of like Batmobiles or anything like that. Like, I wouldn't consider this like, you know, great, but this is prototype Batman. Like he's trying to learn what to do here too. Like I said, I want to see a time jump and now there's a bigger, badder, cooler gadget filled Batmobile. He's, he's got a lot of these gadgets and stuff hidden away. His suits, you know, he takes a full on shotgun to the chest, which I thought was insanely unbelievable. Again, human. Um, it really, I, the only reason it could have worked was if they blew part of the suit open, you could see the armor or layers of armor or something like that's in one of that's in dark Knight returns, which, you know, I've talked about on this channel. I love so much. Anyway, um, so there's this constant, you know, things that do work with things that don't work in the movie. And again, that third act just derails so much. Uh, Catwoman, it never really happens. Selena finds out or talks about Falcone really being her dad and goes to kill him. And, he, and Batman's trying to stop him, stop her from killing him. And it was all just a ploy to get Falcone out of the building so the Riddler could kill him. And that's when the Riddler turns himself in. So you see all of this, and then of course you set up the big scheme with the vans, and they flood the city, and you know Batman goes to Arkham. He thinks the Riddler knows that he's Bruce Wayne because he keeps talking about Bruce Wayne, but he, he basically just says, "No, Bruce Wayne's the one that got away." And this was the perfect chance to make this story mean more. Like they could have had this Arkham scene at the end. He's frustrated; his scheme didn't get didn't get played out the way they wanted. And Batman's there trying to figure out who Hush is, and he can have comments about Bruce Wayne and all this other stuff, but. It doesn't work. And then, of course, there's the sneaky cameo of, you know, another knockoff version of some sort of Joker, which is really a horrible idea, considering the Heath Ledger performance, which followed Nicholson. I, I, I do not want to see a Joker, but it is what it is. So Riddler floods the city, and then you have these weird twists of the movie losing its brain. So Selena has one comment about, like, white privilege and the wealthy. But the Riddler, after he gets Falcone, there's this, and they find all this stuff in the Riddler's house. They see this streaming thing, and 
Riddler, it's basically like a jab at like toxic fans and YouTubers or whatever. He has like 500 fans and he, and he ta- doesn't talk like the Riddler. He just talks like himself and they love him so much. He's convinced them to go to this um, sporting venue, which is where everyone's basically evacuating to because it's the only safe place in the city that's flooding. And all these guys basically dress up like Riddler and have firearms to just shoot and kill people. So the new mayor, because the other mayor had gotten murdered, uh, she wins. And she's basically like female Obama. Like literally, that's part of her uh, slogan running for office. She also lectures Bruce, Bruce Wayne, briefly about not being charitable or spending his money in a, you know, a way to benefit the city, which I think is what sets up the next movie. I mean, I want to see Bruce do some of that. That's all fine. And basically, it derails itself where Batman exposes himself in a way that everyone sees him and he's struggling to take down some of the guys. And when he takes down one of the guys who he bit, the guy basically says I'm vengeance, which is what Batman's mantra has been through the whole film, even the cool parts. So now Bruce is somehow conflicted with what Batman's purpose is, where he has to be more than just taking down bad guys. I guess it's like, he suddenly becomes like a different superhero. Like suddenly it's about just saving these people like quite literally, like even in the daylight, there's a shot of him covered in dirt and there's like a rescue thing. And there's a cool shot with him holding a flare, I'm a guess. But all of this, to be honest, was really almost cheap to me because Batman would have a plan. He would have gadgets. He would have some sort of mechanisms to try to make things better for the people that are going through this. It wouldn't just be like a, hurricane victim firefighter role it was really very weak and then they sneak in like this random thing where he's hurt he can't get up and he uses like this green vial that he has in his i guess utility belt and jabs himself so we're supposed to think this is venom which is this famous batman storyline in the comic books that led to bane and and all this but it's not addressed he just basically like an adrenaline rush and just pummels this guy and then that's it we just move on I don't know. The third act derails the such positives of the film. The look of Gotham, the realism that they were trying to go for. Um, the musical score whew, is phenomenal. And some of the music and, and the way the editing works with that is fine. It's just the camera choices and making everything so slow and methodical. It, it just got to be too much. Like I said, at least 20 to 30 minutes should have been cut out of this film. I really loved most of the penguin stuff i really like the chase scene more than i thought i would especially because so much of it is spoiled in the the trailers but overall i'm going to stick to about a six to a seven i'm going to fluctuate probably watch it again it's going to be on it'll be on uh, streaming here shortly and i'll watch it probably two or three times to kind of really maybe give you guys another feedback or we'll do something with rob we were supposed to do a stream last night and rob wasn't able to so that's what happened with that we were going to talk about batman we're going to talk about batman too we're going to talk like rank the batman rank the, the movies and that kind of thing so i'll wait for him to give you my thoughts on all that because that was definitely a part of my prep for this all right so that said so anyway if you want to leave your comments tell me what you thought of batman if you like the batman what do you think i would not rank this it doesn't really touch the trilogy movies. The Nolan trilogy doesn't really try, uh, touch Batman 89. So it's not in the top four or five. So, you know. This is Kevin Murphy from Rift Tracks and Mystery Science Theater 3000. Hey, this is Mark from Casting Crowns. Hey, this is Alan Powell from the film The Song. Hey, this is Christian Kane. This is Colin Mockery. Hello, everybody. This is Ernie Singleton, a.k.a. T-Dog from The Walking Dead. And you are listening to my main man, Brandon. 